Kia ora. My name is Lydia. And kia ora. I'm Bartek. Nice to meet you. You too. <laughs> so um, I'm a sociology student. i um, currently finished my, just finished my master's degree. And um, yeah, I came over to New Zealand when I was seven, so almost 20 years ago. Um, my family came over from Poland, so I've got, um, yeah, both my parents are Polish, so um, yeah, I'm certainly fu fully Pakia and, you know, migrant from you know, over to Europe, so I always kind of, that's always something that's been a very big part of my identity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What does your ethnic background mean to you? Um, I guess having an awareness that I am Pakia and that there are certain privileges that come along with my skin colour. So it's always, I guess, um, there's always an attempt to be aware of that and to remind myself of that and what that entails. Yeah. Um, what about you? Can you tell us briefly about your background and, um, and whether you identify with any particular ethnic groups? Yeah. Uh, well, according to my whakapapa, uh, I am one-eighth Indian. Um, my grandfather is half English, half Indian. Uh, a quarter European, British, and uh, the rest Māori. Mm. And I identify as Māori. And um, my iwi is uh, uh, Ngāti Haua uh, and Ngāti Tūwharetō and mm. Ngāti Maniopoto. And um, is this, like, what does your ethnic background mean to you? Do you have like certain meanings that you attach to it? And yeah, um, certainly being, uh, you know, indigenous, um, tangata whenua. Mm. So it's really important to me in terms of uh, where I'm going with what I'm doing. Uh, I hope that I can help to improve uh, my own people's health outcomes mm. um, and have an impact on my own people simply because our health outcomes, being the indigenous of this country, um, are the worst mm. of all the groups. Mm. And yeah, what kind of concerns of teaching do you see here and how it affects a Māori students in particular? Um, I guess studying the social and the social sciences, it's quite common, um, especially when like you were saying, you know, your work in, um, in the health field and stuff like that. Mm. Quite often um, when Māori and Pacific students, or Māori Pacific groups, um, you know, are brought into the conversation, it's usually in a very kind of negative light to kind of compare and contrast between various demographics. Yeah. And when that discussion is overwhelmingly negative, I think that does have the potential to, to really alienate certain students. So I think on the one hand, it's important to not, to not dwell on those negative aspects, but to also to, um, to provide them, um, to contextualize them and, you know, the kind of history of colonialism, imperialism, um, like cultural and linguistic genocide and everything like that. You know, because I think if you don't provide that context, it ends up becoming a form of victim blaming, where you mm -hmm. um, blame cultures and communities for failures which are not actually their own, yeah. but actually the products of very violent history. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, as someone of mixed ethnicities, you said that you identify as Māori. Um, why do you feel more belonging with non-Māori than Māori groups? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, well. I've made a lot of friendships with non Māori. Um, like I said before, uh, some of the friendships have um, blossomed from being mm. able to have an open dialogue and, and being able to understand one another and um, bridge that barrier, mm. um, cross the barrier of racism and, and things like that. Because half the time, um, people are willing to um, change their mindset and their viewpoint of you because mm. oftentimes they are, they have these stereotypes formed before they actually get to know you and then mm. of course once they get to know you then they um, they change. Uh, so a lot of my friendships with non-Māori have been mainly because uh, well first of all there's hardly any Māori <laughs> on campus to mm. begin with. Mm. Um, I love interacting with other ethnicities. I mm. love learning about different cultures and I love sharing what I know about my culture mm. uh, with them as well and they love it mm. and um, it um, creates a good space of being able to talk and learn mm. about one another and uh, I, I mean I have friends who are, who are Asian and different um, groups and then Indian and uh, different religions so I just feel like uh, bridging the gap between the two 
enables that um, harmony and unity between mm. us all instead of just distancing mm. ourselves into our own ethnic groups. I think it's important that we should be strengthening our mm. groups, particularly uh, Māori and Pacific Island mm. um, students. However, um, I think that it would be important if we talked to reach out to mm. other ethnicities that are on campus mm. um, as well and, and to be a bit more friendly, I yeah. guess, yeah. Um, okay, uh, do you think this has had um, any particular effect on your identification as Māori? Uh, you know, it's actually strengthened my identification as Māori. Like mm. on social media, I identify as Māori. Mm. I don't need to put it on there, but I put it on there because I want people to know. Mm. Um, particularly because I think that it's important that when you're passionate about certain issues that are just unjust, um, that, uh, that you're not going to stand there and just um, let it continue, that you want to be the change you see in the world. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, sometimes the way uh, we go about challenging uh, aspects and in social injustices as Māori is sometimes not always strategic. Um, and and can create more of a division. Mm. Uh, I mean, I've been reading this great book, which is uh, it's pre 1920s mm. um, about mutual aid, and uh, in it, the idea is that uh, mutual support and uh, cooperation within groups is more productive and is what is going to progress um, mm. us socially as a people, as uh, you know, humans, and that has been the most effective thing in moving, mm. um, you know, causing movements and changes that we see in the world. And of course, it's like if you want to um, be a voice and make a change, it's more uh, effective if you do it as a group. I've had friends, um, non Māori friends, who have made comments about, you know, being part of MAPIS, or they've, they've criticised the, the scheme. Mm. Um, but then when I talk to them about it and I say that it's a matter of just um, you know creating equal opportunity mm. for um, uh, for our people and that we need to increase the uh, representation in the workforce and mm. the health workforce in particular to actually make real change mm. uh, then they actually start to you know their, their hearts change and they mm. end up nodding their head in agreement and then they start mm. thinking, yeah, it's actually a really fantastic idea. Mm. Um, but of course, because uh, you, know, you have all the competition that exists within being able to try and get into medicine. Um, so yeah, they will make those sort of comments because they want so badly mm. to um, be able to have a place. And so they will often make those comments, but when you talk to them about it from that aspect, then they kind of disconnect um, their judgments of our group mm. with that understanding because now they understand why it's so important and then they can then they can realize that they really just uh, f can focus on um, the, mm. their own group that, they, that yeah. they're competing with and so it kind of decreases the um, the subtle racism that mm. goes on um, mm. yeah do you think Pākehā should make an effort to learn more about Māori culture and history? Uh, yes, I do, definitely. Um, you know, Pākehā, this, this is, this is, you know, Aotearoa is not, um, you know, Pākehā country. It's not, I, um, and I think there's, there's still a real hesitance on the part of many Pākehā to really kind of accept and to come to terms with New Zealand's brutal kind of history and to really kind of accept um, the realities of colonization and everything that entailed, you know, like, um, you know, from the suppression of Tohunga and like, you know, Native Schools Act, like, you know, land seizures and everything like that. Um, I mean, some people do kind of accept this and make efforts to, to rectify this, but I think at the very minimum, I think the first step has to be an acknowledgement that this happened before we can start any meaningful discussion to address it. Um, but I think, yeah, and, um, yeah, I think that, that Pākehā definitely do have an obligation and I, I think addressing racism shouldn't be um, a struggle only left to peoples of colour. That's, it's not fair to, um, to leave that battle only to be fought by those who are you know, victimised by it most. Mm. Um, and 
you know, and as as people that benefit from from various privileges, you know, white privilege and everything like that, like yeah, but I think an obligation to actually to reflect on those privileges and how they benefit them, and to um, be ready to give some of those away in order, you know, to create um, greater social equality. Do you think that they'd be more receptive if incentives were were given? Like for for example, if there was a job and they said, well, you have to learn, uh, you know, the Treaty of Waitangi mm. before you mm. can actually uh, take this job. You think that would be quite effective in helping Pākehā yeah. uh, become interested in learning? Yeah, definitely. I think, yeah, those kinds of things should be explored. And I think the solution is probably in education to ensure that, you, mm -hmm. know, you know, in primary school and, you know, through high school that we should have, you know, um, develop a greater understanding of, you know, of, you know, our history and culture and we're we've come from, you know, sort of at that young age, so that, yeah. Yeah, I was thinking about um, that in particular the other day, and uh, I was wondering whether it's actually mandatory mm. in high schools. Um, I have a friend that teaches it to 10 year, mm. oh, sorry, I have a friend that teaches it to year 10 students, mm. uh, but I was wondering whether it's across private schools um, mm. as well as public, yeah. but what I have been told is that it's not. I think you probably have to take it to a certain yeah. age and then it kind of becomes an optional kind of pathway. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. But then I'm wondering, is it actually mm. uh, mandatory before yeah. you can actually specialise into different areas at high school? Mm. Uh, because I think that it would be quite effective if, if everybody learned about the history yeah. and the Treaty of Waitangi. Yeah. I know so many um, New Zealanders and so many people that know nothing mm. about our history. Yeah. Yeah. I think part of the problem is like is we do I, I guess like yeah there is that part of education where you do cover a lot of that stuff and you know even in um, I think it's for a lot of health students you probably have to do like some papers around mm -hmm. the treaty and everything yeah, like that. Public health. Yeah. yeah and I think for a lot of people it's like some people do approach it as this kind of thing where you have to check that box get that stuff out of the way then you can move on with doing the real kind of thing yeah but then the problem yeah. with doing that is that some people don't seem to take it very seriously it just becomes this like um, this box you have to check, which you don't really kind of seriously take on board, yeah. and it kind of becomes this like, yeah, this extra thing that's actually not, you know, you know what I mean? 